Okay. Um, so you're going to have to do drawing, three-dimensional drawing, and that's where some people um, really dislike it. Yeah, I'm recording already. Right. <laughs> Thank you. See, I thought this was pretty helpful because then, then you'll see it and I'll see it. Um, so there's all sorts of different volumes that we're going to be doing. Um, the first ones we're going to start with, they're, they're not the easiest or most straightforward. They're just, they're all different. Okay. So the first style of volumes that we're going to do is we're going to have a three-dimensional shape. And I, I'm assuming you probably know what a cross section is by now. Uh, I believe it's biology, don't you do cross sections with cross sections and stuff like that too? Maybe. Biology was an area of geography. That's that's not that long. That was uh, oh, actually you generally probably don't remember seeing what that called. Okay, either way. <laughs> cross section <laughs> is if you cut something, slice oh, something. Oh yeah. The shape of it is a cross section. But you're like really more advanced answer than that. No. Oh, oh. Do that in medical just what a cross section is. And I do know what a cross section okay. is. So we're going to have volumes that are created um, by having cross sections that are squares, rectangles, triangles. Whoa, what? What am I writing? Yeah, what is this? Uh, squares, triangles, and semicircles. I apparently was really tired this morning. Let me change that. Uh, I mean, like a rectangle is a square anyway, but still. A square is a rectangle. That's, you know, this is not going to be good today. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I told you this year has absolutely burnt my brain out. Miss Barry was gone for like a week because she had a migraine. And I literally fought the class because she was gone. That's fantastic. Man. It's like, so there were no slides. Here's we actually can the one good thing about 8b is we essentially have one formula that would cover the entire thing. Um, I mean when I say formula, that's a very generic one. So the, the idea that we're going to go with is that volume is going to be created by taking the integral of the area of the cross section. Now, since, since health is all about things changing constantly, um, the area is constantly going to be changing. So if it was a solid area that was a cross section, then these wouldn't be very difficult because that's essentially like geometry. Because if you think of a prism in geometry, um, like a triangular prism is like a tent, tent shape, like Boy Scout tent shape, uh, where the ends are the same shapes and then they are connected in between. So that's, that's called a prism. And if our area of the cross section was constant, then that would just be a prism. The reason this is in kelp is because the area of the cross section is going to be constantly changing. Um, now, there's a difference between the homework you're going to have in Khan Academy and the AP test. Now, the, the good thing for you is that the AP test is going to be easier than the homework in Khan Academy. And I don't know why they're set up different, but it doesn't matter. So, in Khan Academy, the cross sectional shapes that you will be given are squares, rectangles. Equilateral triangles, acosis triangles, um, 
I'm supposed to say great. I got these wick triangles. Um, but one more kind of triangle, too. Okay. Okay. No, no, I meant one more kind of triangle. Um, I, I appreciate you throwing out triangle. Uh, <laughs> I believe that's it. I feel like there's definitely another kind of triangle that I just want to find out. So, um, the way these are going to be set up is the base of the shape is going to be something or whatever you know like the base of your shape is going to be created by two functions or three functions like the areas that we've been doing in eight a so the base of the shape looks like this and then these coming up off of the shape will be these cross sections so like this is supposed to look like the base being some sort of wavy thing and then coming up off of the base would be triangle so this is what an isosceles right triangle looks like it's considered isosceles because the leg and the height are the same now that's the easiest type of triangle problem for you because the area is easy to find because the base and the height are the same so you don't have to do a big difference it's basically half of a square um these other triangle ones are actually quite annoying because finding the area of them is a lot of work and that's this is where i was trying to say the three with the asterisk are the three that are on the ap test so the ap test only chooses from those three shapes the Khan academy has a lot more pick from which so that's what I was trying to say. Khan Academy is going to be more difficult than the AP test questions that are associated with. But this is the type of shape we're going to be looking at. And our goal is to find the volume. This triangle, or whatever shape it would be, changes size depending on how big the base is at that location. Like near the end of this shape would be a very small triangle. So because the triangle is a change in shape, we use an integral. Because an integral adds up an infinite number of them along the way. So you probably kind of remember, I guess it would have been, I guess it would have been last trimester when we first learned integrals. It's called the accumulation function. So an integral sometimes is known as an accumulation function because you add up a bunch of things and it's it's an integral is created from summation so we're going to be adding up all of these areas and then that creates the volume you don't have to like physically do this like i'm just kind of giving you a mental idea of how we get the answers but like the work itself is just the integral of the area so it's not as bad as it seems so this will be something like what we'll be working with. So you'll either be given these equations, or you'll be given a picture, or you know something. You'll be given the information in some way or form. And for these problems, you're going to have a base that constantly is different. Um, so each problem, this is completely different. Each one, you'll be given a shape that comes out of it as a cross section. And then the last piece of information you'd have to be given is what orientation of the cross section is. So these would be cross sections that are perpendicular to the x-axis. Those I better draw it in front of my can't be waving my arms. Okay. 
So if we have a square coming out of the board like that, these would be considered the base whose cross section is perpendicular to the x axis. If you have a square set up like this, then these would be perpendicular to the y axis. So all this information would have to be given to you. Um, so I have a three dimensional picture here to draw it for you, but I, I definitely want you guys to know you don't need to draw the three dimensional picture ever. Like you can if you want. I know some of you are really bad at it. Some of you like drawing three dimensional, it's just kind of more personal thing. Um, but we can work from the two dimensional information. So I'll do my best to draw this one because we've got two parabolas. Um, let's just assign a number to P and Q. So let's say the let's say the red line crosses at um, zero three. So it crosses at zero three, and then this is probably going to be like they look about the same. Yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. So we'll have three on both sides. So we've got a parabola. Because when you draw like this, it 100% gets distorted. <laughs> and then we've got another parabola that we'll say crosses at like one and a half each week. Well, I just drew the red one backwards, didn't I? I drew the blue one. The red one is one vertex of the axis. The blue one has the vertex down here. So this shape is that one kind of on the three dimensional perspective. And then um, what shape should we, should we go with? What's probably the easiest for you guys to picture? Squares? Um, let's do squares perpendicular to the y-axis just because that would be easier for me to draw. So every single location is going to have squares coming out of it. And the size of the square is dependent on how big the base is. I'll pick my side out. I'm stupid. <laughs> um, I had a lot of practice. And and when I was in school, we didn't have home to play with. So um, when we got bored, we would draw. This is what you do for fun. 100%. Make sense. Now, if you can kind of picture this, I don't know if this is a good idea or not. Um, I can kind of draw. So what you would end up seeing is something kind of like the Sydney Opera House. Is because the cross sections are all squares, what you would actually see is the side of these shapes would be flat, but would be curved. The curve would follow the base. And then the top would be flat, but it would be rounded to follow kind of the how big the square is. It's, just, it's very difficult for most students to try to picture these in their mind, but that's actually okay. So the great thing is that you're not going to need to picture it to be able to find the answers. So what, what we're mostly going to do is I'll, I'll 
I'll draw a couple of these for you guys so you can put them together. But we're mainly going to work with the two dimensional picture. So if I go back to screen and I go by this, this is how we find the answer is we're going to integrate the area of the cross section. And we can figure out the area of the cross section just by one sample cross section that we draw up there. So we don't have to be able to do that to get the answer. Huh. It used to bounce. It still does. Yeah. <laughs> that. Okay. So let's. Are you guys ready to try a problem? I, I felt like it would be helpful for me to show you what we're working with first before I say, well, here's how I get the answer. Okay, so here's a sample. Let me scroll down a bit. Up here. Okay, so we've got two equations that were given F and G. Um, if I were you, I would draw this in my notes, like just a sketch of this. It's fine if you don't have the three dimensional anything. Um, I'll, I have the notes saved and I have the video saved, so you can always look that up if you want it. Um, if you're a good 3D drawer, then I'll just try it because it's probably fun for you if you're good at it. So we've got two random equations there. We're told that region R is the base of a solid. And for each x value, the cross section of the solid taken perpendicular to the x axis. Is a rectangle whose base lies in R and whose height is X. So the sentence at the bottom is generally the important information because it tells us how to set it up. Can you guys can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. The, the mask makes it feel like it's really quiet today. And if, if all those words up there are confusing to you, you know, that, that's okay. That's kind of what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to explain and, and help you to interpret it. For the most part, these generally feel really scary at first and um, feel very imposing. I'm going to go very slow on these first handful of days. And because of that, the rest of the chapter will be easy. It's kind of information overload if we go fast. Um, it's not like a draw this one, but like putting that to the right one is zero, two, six, four. Oh, um, that's not going to help me with the scale. That one is five. Six, four, by one. And uh, zero, one, six, four. And blue is true. Four by one. <clears throat> okay. For each x value, the cross section taken perpendicular to the x axis. So that's kind of telling us the orientation is is this way. So the picture will be drawn like that. A rectangle whose base lies in R. So every every cross section is going to be a rectangle 
But every one of these is going to have the exact same height. So that's going to be the difference between the rectangle and the square. On the square, the height change constantly because the height and the base are the same. On the rectangle, what you're going to end up seeing is every one of these is going to be the exact same height no matter how wide. I'll give you a second. Let's just start from there. So because of that, you're going to end up with a much more uniform shape. So that's kind of what this one will look like. Now on our two-dimensional drawing, I'm going to write the same information. I mean, it's eventually not going to look the same. But perpendicular to the x-axis means that my cross-section will just be, I can just draw a single line like that. Now, if you want to draw it as a rectangle, you can. Some people like to just draw this line only. And then mentally, they kind of know which one's which. Um, I I don't really care. I suppose I should draw this way. So if we have a rectangle coming out of the screen, I know the height of the rectangle is x, just because that's what it says. But the base of the rectangle is what changes all the time. The most work you're going to have to do is you're going to have to figure out how long this line is. So rather than calling in somebody, does anybody remember? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Perfect. So it, part of the reason last chapter I tried to ingrain in you upper minus lower, right minus left, is we use that same setup. To find the length of this line, we're going to take the top y value minus the bottom y value. So the top one is the straight line, 2 plus 1 third x, minus the bottom one, which is the curved one, 2 to the x over 3. Um, Right. Okay, so the, the volume equation is going to be the integral. We're, because we're doing it vertically, we're going to start vertically here and end vertically here. So we're going from x equals zero to x equals six. And each vertical line is going to be top minus bottom. So 2 plus 1 third x minus 2 to the x over 3. So this is the base times the height of the rectangle, which is x. Because every single time we're gonna we're gonna integrate the area of the shape we have. So we've got base times height just because it's a rectangle. If it was a square, it would be base squared. If it was a semicircle, one half pi r squared. Um, you know, each each shape is gonna have a different formula, but it's kind of specific to that problem. Oh, I'm going to hold off on that one. 
because the radius times root root will come back. <laughs> we, have, we have to figure out half of that. Yes. How will we get the information that's up there? This, this would be the equation that would get you the answer. Traditionally, on the AP test, this is what they'd have you write. They wouldn't have you solve it. They would just have you write the formula that would get the answer. Because frequently, these work out pretty horribly that um, doing it by hand can be tough. Should, should we try another one? Or because I'll absolutely answer away if you have questions. Is this something you need to look at a little bit to soak in? Yeah, I'm just curious why the height is x. Uh, only because they said so. Is it is that supposed to be a point or just a general like another uh, variable? No. Like is it the same x that we plug into the base? Yes. Okay, because like in a 3D diagram, the height is on z. So <laughs> that's confusing. Me. Well, so x is just. Um, you know, a number that's associated with that. Doesn't matter which orientation it is. Yeah. X would just be a number. But correct on the drawing, it's the Z axis. Okay. Uh, we're only able to do this problem because they told us exactly what the height would be. If the height is something we have to find, we wouldn't be able to do this. Okay. Because okay. um, that's, that's usually what's done in multivariable calc is when you start having more than one dimension that changes. I get why we're saying that like the height is X. I don't think I get that, but you were saying with the rectangles specifically that the, the height doesn't change is what you're saying with the three dimensional drawing, but wouldn't the X value change every time like with, with every rectangle? Um, I get what you're saying. The way these are set up is that you're going to pick the number that will go in plus of x. Okay. Um, so we try to set it up in general ahead of time. And then the x values are chosen afterwards, I guess. Um, so what you're saying is correct. But the reason it's sad or say the same is because there will be a number associated with it later. Okay. So if it was, no, I don't know what that was. <laughs> no, I get what you're saying. hundred percent get what you're saying. Um, do you guys feel like, yeah, this is the same one, right? Yes. I, I was going to say, I thought I picked the same direction. Do you guys feel like you could try this one on your own? All, all I would like you to get I don't care if you draw it or not. I, I would like you to see if you can come up with the equation that will find the answer. Because generally, once you figure out how these are set up, you don't have to draw anything. And then many of the problems, you don't even have a picture. And I'll, I'll do my best so that we don't go until 9.50. So for the most part, <clears throat> usually you get better at these just by practicing them, seeing all different kinds of setups. Um, so I've got way more examples in the notes than what we're going to be able to do together. And I'm going to kind of rely upon you guys a little bit to tell me how you're feeling on the topic. Testing, testing. 
Yeah. I, I feel like that would be weird for me to. I'm going to go with random number generator again. Same thing we used to pick who did music, except I'll do it on my phone. <laughs> Um, how many people do we have? 14. Okay, generate a bunch of times and we get six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Connor. Me? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Oh, sweet. Does that just give the equation? Um, what would you do? What did you do first? Uh, well, I first I just looked at the two equations and obviously we have a picture, but like, if you didn't know which one was um, top or bottom, which one was top or bottom, you could pick a point between. Like, yep. From the good. Zero to zero good. High. Good. Um, you could pick a point in there to find out which one's higher, uh, which one's top and which one's bottom. I mean. Okay. And then uh, you know because it's ln x equals five, and I guess we're just assuming, or we can look at the picture that the other end is zero. So uh, then, correct. From this picture, you can just tell that. So then you would have the integral from. Um, zero to five, and then you would take your top equation, which in this case is the x e e to the x over four, or just f of x minus g of x for one. All of that in parentheses times x e x. So this would be the height for the not the height the base. <laughs> This would be the base of your rectangle. This would be the height of your rectangle. Perfect. The hardest part is generally figuring out these two numbers and the base of the, the line. Um, but I, I tried starting on soft last unit by talking about top minus bottom lots and we're used to that layout. And honestly, if I yeah. How do you guys feel from zero to five? How comfortable are you at finding the length of those lines, top minus bottom, right minus left, zero to five? How comfortable are you at finding that answer? Okay. So uh, that's not some, something that you don't necessarily want me to take a lot of time on, I guess. Okay, which is all right. I've been, I've been trying to ingrain that method because once we start moving to the last sections, like the last two days, these are where they start feeling complicated to students, but they only feel complicated if you don't know how to find the length of a line. Because a lot of, a lot of people, this just doesn't click. And so if this is making sense to you, then um, you should probably be good pretty much for the entire rest of this unit. Are you saying finding that length of a line given a, a value of X, like, or just knowing how to find it for the whole thing? Either or. Okay. Um, just finding the length of a line, because that's all, that's, this is all we have to do for every one of these days coming up. So today is us finding areas with, squares, rectangles, triangles, semicircles. The next topic is you're going to be given a shape and then you're going to rotate to that shape to create a three-dimensional shape. And that sounds worse, but it's just as easy because you're just going to find the area of the circle. Um, but finding this length is the important part. Okay, let me let me move to everyone. Uh, nope. No, nope, I want to find like a triangle and or mm, no. I suppose I can just change the directions myself. <laughs> Another square work. Oh. Okay, I guess we're just going to change the direction. Um, let's just take this one and let's say semicircle. Sure, I'm sure you guys know this. Semicircle. 
We'll do a triangle next. Um, is there a plane? Well, at least it's worth it. We'll keep this, let's just keep the same direction. Um, so now we have equations in the equation. And uh, I'm going to stop drawing the three dimensional one, partly because it goes really slow. And um, I purposely picked the easiest ones to draw. And start getting as much work. If we were in my normal classroom, I actually have a whole bunch of models that I could put out for you guys to kind of see what they look like, which makes it really easy to help you visualize. Um, that's what students have done in the past for their projects. So one, they're in my classroom, and two, uh, they don't do projects with students, which I don't know. I haven't gotten to do projects for two years. Because last year was when we moved to this in some We were supposed to go super slow and everything. You guys have already learned more than the kids who are in 12 2 right now. Because last year they only went up to unit six and a half. We got like partway through seven. Um the next person. I got it. Okay, how would you start this? Uh, just sort of finding creating the y axis. I would alter the equation to be in terms of uh, x. Okay, so what was that? It was square root of negative y plus three. Because it's perpendicular to the y axis, it's horizontal. <clears throat> and because it's horizontal, the equations need to read x equal. So this equation, um, so what would this be? This would be x squared equals three minus y, x equals plus and minus square root of three minus y. This is going to be the positive square root of three minus y. The left half would be the negative square root of three minus y. So whenever you get a plus and minus, that usually creates the problem split it into two. So the right half will be square root of three minus y. The left half we don't use. So we only need the right half. Um, and then the left hand side, how about what would this one be? If the right hand side is square root of three minus y, this is x equals zero. Zero. Good. Can you pick the next person? Excellent start though. What'd you say? Next person. Okay. Uh, um, what's the next thing we need to figure out? Maybe. Uh, first of all, the like, period bound. Yeah. Okay. That, that, that's perfect because that's the next thing we need to figure out. Yeah. We got to go bottom yeah. to top now. This is zero. Y equals zero. Plus plus plus. Yeah, plus three. Excellent. Um, next person. Okay. Um, Unless you want to keep going. Try it. Okay. So we're doing the cross section is a semicircle. Yeah. So we have the integral from zero to three. That's the part you figured out. Yeah. What's the area of a semicircle? Uh, it is uh, pi r squared divided by two. Okay. So it doesn't matter where you write the pi over two. Um, I can put I can put the one half pi on the inside, or I can put it on the outside just because they're multiple. Right. Do you think you know the radius? So for the radius, you just take the division of the pi with y times this, right? Excellent. So you're going to need to take the black line information and then just divide by two. So the black line was what's the length of the black line? Square root of 
Um, you are correct. I did used to get used to writing it like that. Okay. So if you're and your answer is still correct, but get used to writing it as right minus left, even if the left is zero. And then divide by two. We divided by two as part of the parentheses. So I'll try to make that clear. The reason I'm going to try to make that clear is because when you get some of these in Khan Academy, they have you actually integrate this to find the answer. And some people get a little bit thrown off on that. Because almost guaranteed in Khan Academy, they would take the one half pi out front. And then this divided by two is squared. So it's essentially divided by four. So out front would be pi over eight. And then the square root of three minus y squared would be three minus y. And so often this is the answer in concavity. And I, I, a lot of students last trimester got really thrown off going from here to here. Does somebody want me to go over where the pile rate came from again? Okay. So the, the one half pi would be out front as pi over two. And then this parentheses, this parentheses is going to be square root of three minus y minus zero over two squared. And if we square top and square bottom, we get three minus y over four. And then the, the over four part goes out front. Over two and the over four together make the over eight. And they, they do that pretty frequently on the answers. So that's that's kind of something you'll have to get used to see. Um, this two? Because I wrote the wrong one. <laughs> Good catch. I have no idea where I wrote it to. I wonder if I saw it. I wonder if I saw the two I might two and look to. Good catch. How are we how are we at, at what's up here though? Because I feel all right. Okay. <clears throat> Um, then why don't they? Why don't I give you the worst one? Next? So, if this was an isosceles right triangle, that's not the word. If it was an isosceles right triangle, an isosceles right triangle would look like this, whose base and height are the same interval. So when you're when you're writing the formula up here, one half base times height for a triangle, an isosceles right triangle goes easy because it's just going to be one half base squared. And this is what's on the AP test. But nearly every single triangle question in Khan Academy is not one of these. Nearly every question in Khan Academy. Is an equilateral triangle or um, too long. I don't know what to do with this. Is what they have in there, and there's there's zero. I have zero control over what questions you guys get. Um, otherwise, I would go and remove those. And it's not that they're horrible, it's not like they're impossible. They're just very, these two are both very different. So let's go over both of them to, to tell you how to find the answers. So the, the integration part isn't any different. Like, like the 
the integration from all of these questions is going to always be the same. You integrate the area formula. What I'm guessing you guys need help on is figuring out the area formula for these when all you know is the base. Right? Because each time, each time the base is the only thing you're given. You're going to be able to do top minus bottom or right minus left to find the base. So an equilateral triangle is 60, 60, 60. And I'm, I'm showing you how I come up with these because there's a good chance you're not going to remember these formulas and you'll have to come up with them on your own. So for every triangle, we need the base and we need the height. So we're trying to find the height of an equilateral triangle using this interval. What you're going to do is you're going to split it in half and each half becomes a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now, the base of this 30, 60, 90 triangle is half of the base. We need to find the height of this triangle knowing that. So a 30, 60, 90 triangle goes in the ratio of one to two to the square root of three. So we know the side that is the one. So the height is going to be this number times the square root of three. That's where I'd say this. This is where most of you have been at geometry for what, like three years? Well, well what did you just have? Next or eight? Eight. Uh, I suppose it's different for everybody, but yeah, it's been what? <clears throat> so the area of this equilateral triangle, only knowing the base, one half base times height which is square root of three over two B. So the area of an equilateral triangle knowing the base is going to be square root of three over four B squared. Now, if you guys can remember this, you are more than welcome to use it. If you can't remember it, this is how you come up with it. Now, the, the second picture is similar. The difference between an equilateral triangle and an isosceles right triangle is hypotenuse on base. The difference is that this 90 degree angle automatically makes this a 45, makes this a 45. So this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. 45, 45, 90 triangles go in the ratio of one to one to the square root of two. So the height of this one is the same as the base of this red one. Now, I'm positive there's another kind of triangle that I'm forgetting about. But this is how you have to kind of come up with them on your own. You have to be able to find the area if it only one piece of information. Is this all right? Mm -hmm. it's, this is a lot of geometry. 
um, that's been used for a while. It's kind of partly from trade because the 45, 40, 90, and the 30, 60, 90 are from the new So it's not like it's forever ago. So we have 20 minutes left. I thought it would be helpful for you guys to take those 20 minutes and actually work on the questions in here so that you can have, ask about how to do something if you get stuck on wording, on anything like that. And so obviously we only, we only did like three examples together. Um, but trying these questions is gonna be the most helpful thing of all. So I don't think I saw. Okay, does looks like you didn't have any questions. Okay. I mean, I'm hoping you guys get that you can just ask out loud if you have questions at any time too. Okay, but I'll I'll stop here. Um, let me stop the recording.